Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 is going to take us to around the 12th of uh, November. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And the CFS opening salvo in terms of the monthlies uh, for December. Going to be an interesting watch. I shall get on that for you very shortly. Um, just say that first video I say was our 7 a.m. broadcast. We've also released the EC 30 days slash six weeks of care for the UK and for the rest of Europe too. So check out those two videos if you'd like to. But I'll tell you what's coming up on the channel tomorrow at the end of the video. It's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow. Say no more about that until the end of the vid. Uh, right, okay, let's go on, get on with it. Then I'm going to start off with the central England temperature. So just to confirm that the CT came in for October uh, to 12.1. We said this yesterday, but there's confirmation again. Uh, that is one and a half degrees above average. So, yeah, it's been a very mild, warm autumn so far. We had September at 15.9, over two degrees above average. Now, October comes in at one and a half degrees above average. So, yeah, it's been a really mild autumn uh, so far. For November, provisional, just to the very first day, the first, uh, we're at 9.8, which is an anomaly of only 0.7 of a degree above average. That will come down further over the next few days. Uh, and nights, as we are going to have some quite cold nights, actually. Many of us woke up to a slight frost this morning, and uh, the nights, if anything, will get a little bit colder for the next uh, couple. So I reckon that will be shown below average, probably, by the end of this week, which is somewhere we haven't been very often with the CET over the past, uh, you know, over the past few weeks. So uh, we shall keep a close eye on uh, that, of course. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. And it's going to be it's going to at Birmingham today. So red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. Of course, we're starting off below average at the moment, both with surface and upper air temperatures. Those upper air temperatures will actually get a little bit cold, if anything, over the next uh, couple of days and nights. Um, that's why the, the frost risk increases. At the end of week and into weekend, the upper air temperatures lift up. We actually go a little bit milder than average by the beginning of next week. And then we hover very close. Close to average, really, as we go through the second week of November and into the middle part of the month. But there is a lot of scatter within that. So uh, we've got these uh, warmer ensemble members up here, and then we've got these colder ensemble members down there. You'll see that the thick green line, which is the operational midnight operational run, sort of takes off and becomes an outlier for uh, a little bit of the period later on in the month. And there's probably a bit of zonality going on as well there. So uh, that scatter is sort of indicative of like a zonal sine wave, I think. So warmer and colder sectors alternating. There might be a little bit of a current trend as well uh, towards the very end of the ensemble graph, which gets us uh, around the 17th or 18th of November. But of course, that is a really long way out. It is going to be relatively dry over the next week to 10 days as well. So lots of dry weather coming up central England, maybe a little bit more unsettled around the middle part of November. But then again, that that's a long way off, and of course, uh, it is unreliable within the GFS and its ensembles. Temperature anomalies on the 2nd of November going to be a little bit mild of an average overall, averaging things out, but not a particularly big deviation. The far south is actually a bit cooler elsewhere, slightly above average for those temperature uh, anomalies. Precipitation anomalies on the 2nd of November, drier than average for Ireland and for the UK as well. Latest screen from that from EarthNoldSchool.net shows that wind is in from the north at the moment. So that's the reason temperatures have lowered. Uh, got low pressure up here. And of course that brings down this rather cold northerly flow. Right, let's go start going through some chart data then. This is how the UK Met Euro is looking for uh, midnight on Friday. High pressure just going to slip southwards then. Time to allow some slightly less cold or milder air in around the top of the ridge, particularly to more northern and western areas. By Saturday, things are going rather flat. The high pressure is across France and Biscay, and that's bringing in a much milder west wind. It could still be rather chilly in the south, though, um, and maybe even risk of some fog as well for southern areas. But generally, it's turning milder as we move into weekend. Quite a deep area of low pressure diverts to the northeast. To stop them there uh, later in the weekend. So this is like uh, Saturday into Sunday. So perhaps it's going to be a little bit stormy in the north, wet and windy, 
reasonable amount of dry weather down in the south, I would have thought. And then the high pressure sort of re-establishes again uh, next week. Within a colder air mass, though, so, uh, again. So temperature probably lower a little bit into the second half next week with the frost risk returning. Uh, that's how we're going to get to the end of the UK at Euro. So higher pressure in the south, lower pressure in the north. A little bit unsettled for north western areas, drier in the south. And generally temperatures probably relatively mild. Uh, then we go through to the uh, GFS Midnight Run, which you know will become very mild later on, but let's see what it does before that. So uh, this is midnight on Friday. Again, the hyper's just slipping south. was enough to allow some slightly less cold or milder air to start rolling in over top of the high. Uh, into Saturday, the high pressure then is somewhere around Biscay, low pressure in the north, bringing wet and windy weather to Scotland. Could turn a little bit stormy over the weekend for Scotland, uh, maybe risk some severe gales, high pressure still continue to ridge in the south, could bring a reasonable amount of dry weather down there. And then the high pressure sort of re-establishes early next week. Again, relatively dry conditions, particularly for England and Wales, always more unsettled, close to these areas of low pressure in the north. But a lot of anti-cyclonic influences on the midnight GFS run right the way up to day 10, by which time it does start to turn more unsettled and will bring up a very mild southwesterly wind. Uh, there. So the second week of uh, November, definitely looking milder compared to the first week of November. Uh, by the time get just beyond day 10, which is the 13th of the month, we've got high pressure re-establishing right over top of the coast. So after a lot of messing around and coming and going with troughs and ridges, high pressure then definitively builds strongly. Uh, and that brings loads of dry weather and will probably bring an increasing risk of overnight frost and fog, I would have thought. I would have thought. It's a very extended range with this GFS from the high pressure keeps going. Remember, this is uh, when the operational run becomes a mild outlier in terms of the uh, upper air temperatures. But, of course, at this time of year, in November and increasingly through winter, uh, the, uh, the upper air temperatures don't tell you everything when you're under an area of high pressure. Although you have got mild air a lot, that could be quite cold on the surface, actually, if it's a clear high with the risk of overnight frost and fog. In any case, by the very end of the GFS midnight run, the high pressure pulls out into the North Atlantic. Low pressure starts to dig in from the north. And that looks like it's about to set up a very cold, uh, well, perhaps not a very cold, but a cold northerly blast. Uh, looks like it's on the way there uh, if we could go any further with the GFS midnight run, which we can't. That's the 18th of November. Right, let's have a look at the uh, 6th then. So again, we've got high pressure slipping southwards on Friday, allowing something a little bit milder to come around the top of the high into the north. And this deep area of low pressure brings wet and windy weather through uh, Saturday into Sunday across the northern half of the country. I think the rain in the south will probably be relatively light, but uh, certainly the north could turn rather stormy for a time later on Saturday. That low pressure clears away to uh, Norway as we get through to Sunday and we pull in a colder northwest wind. And then high pressure re-establishes behind that low and that's been a cooler air mass so that brings a return of uh, overnight frost risk for the early part of next week. Not for long though. We soon go back into these milder west south westerlies around the middle part of uh, next week. Actually looking wet and windy again in the north mid middle of next week um, and relatively mild too with winds in from the west and from the southwest. Up to day 10, which is the 12th of November, this deep area of low pressure starts moving towards Norway. High pressure pulls out to west and it looks like we're about to start pulling in some colder air from the north and indeed that is what happens. So uh, with this GFS uh, 6 z run, high pressure then ridges north. We've got a mid-Atlantic ridge developing, low pressure plunging southwards through Scandinavia into northern, uh, into northern parts of Germany and in between we've got this northerly wind pushing down from the Arctic so obviously going much colder by the time we get through to the middle of uh, November high pressure building to our north and west low pressure to our east winds in from a cold north or northeast direction and look what happens if high pressure after that it begins to reach to Scandinavia very interesting GFS run uh, this one so that starts to turn the wind into the east of the northeast. It's not a particularly cold air mass. What's interesting there is, you know, the, the way that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge eventually goes to the Scandinavian high, and ultimately the Siberian high, which is sitting across western parts of uh, Russia. So becoming very blocked around the middle part of uh, November, and obviously colder, not desperately cold, but obviously colder, and uh, maybe getting into, like, a wintry pattern. By the very end of the GFS 6, uh, this low pressure is diving in from the north. That will be bringing further rain with it but again it's a pattern that's interesting here notice the low pressures around the azores high pressure around uh, iceland greenland 
So that is a negative LEO type pattern. Is that beginning to start setting up what could be a prolonged cold spell into the second half of November? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's all extended range and unreliable time frame stuff. But uh, quite an interesting GFS 6 up there. Uh, GEM again shows that the high pressure sleeping cells. If, if you're enjoying this video, by the way, please give me a smash the like button. Make make sure you're subscribed to our channel and drop a comment. Let us know anything about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We need to put on around 70 subscribers now. That's all to get ourselves to 12.5k. Uh, so please give us a sub. Thank you so much to all of you. Right, we go through the GEM. Uh, so Madre begin to roll in around top high on Friday, Saturday through to Sunday. Wet and windy in Menorca. Be gale force winds. Across Scotland, mainly dry, closest ridge in the south and milder. Then high pressure ridges back in early next week could bring a return of the frost risk. And then the high pressure sort of slips quickly across to east parts of Europe by middle next week with low pressure in off the Atlantic, bringing wet and windy weather. And then increasingly wet and windy, really, as we get up towards day 10 with the GM. That's a big area of low pressure to the west of Ireland that's going to bring milder air from the southwest, but also quite a bit of rain. Certainly no sign of any North Lears, uh around or after day 10 with that one. And then we've got the ECM looking uh, like this. Again, that high pressure is slipping a little bit further south on Friday and now something a little bit cooler to come around the top of the high into the weekend. Very windy in the north with, with the risk of some gales there. Mainly dry down in the south, but could be a little bit of rain uh, there. Early next week, the risk sort of re-establishes, so that could bring a return of overnight frost um, during the early part of next week, a member ridge sort of moving or slipping eastwards gradually, allowing a little bit more of an Atlantic influence to come in from west. Relatively mild with the upper air temperatures with that, but could be a little bit colder on the surface, actually, with the risk of some frost and fog. It would depend whether it's a clear high or not. And then by day 10, very anti-cyclonic high pressure, so sitting around the country, no, not much sign of a northerly doing uh, there, but uh, of course the uh, the, um, the, the midnight GFS run didn't bring that normally in until uh, the middle of the second half of November anyway, so it might be a little bit of a, a little bit early really to be looking for signs of northerly winds, but you know, quite dry anyway with the ECM at day 10. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometrode.com At the moment showers are particularly around coastal areas, although tomorrow they will get a little bit more widespread in the east, but many inland areas are going to have a lot of dry weather. And then into the weekend, we start to pick up this westerly, so that brings rain into the north. Not much getting through to the south, though. Early next week, a lot of dry weather on offer. The rain generally kept at bay to the uh, north and west. Many southern east areas largely dry, and that carries on all the way up to day 10. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which will get us to the 12th of uh, November. 19 members of the ECM ensembles will have high pressure sitting to our south. So that's going to be bringing quite a bit of dry weather with it and will be quite mild. Uh, 11 have quite a big area of high pressure in control of the weather by uh, day 10. Lower pressure is out to the west, so there's a lot of dry weather on offer with that. Could be quite chilly, you know, depending on uh, whether that's a clear high. And then 14 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to our east, probably bringing up like a southerly southeast wind. That's probably going to be relatively mild, but again, there is a risk of some overnight frost and fog. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. We'll get us to the 17th of November in the second half of the month. 16 members of the ECM ensemble show high pressure, more or less over, slight to the north country, main dry. It could be a little bit chilly with that, bringing wind from a uh, easterly direction slightly. 10, we'll have low pressure just to our west. That's going to be very unsettled. and will be relatively mild with winds coming up from the south. We have 8 with high pressure over the country, but ridging to Scandinavia. So that's going to be mainly dry, but will be potentially rather cold, bringing in wind from the east. Then we have another 8, which are flat and westerly. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Winds in from the west with that one. We have 5 with high pressure over country and going out to our west. That's going to be mainly dry, a little bit of a west northwest influence of that. And then four with low pressure to the east and a mid Atlantic ridge. That's going to be bringing in a cold northerly wind. Lots of options, lots of possibilities and potentials there into the second half of November. And quite a few of them involve something rather colder as well, I have to say. So it looks like second half of November really is all up for grabs at the moment.
CFSB2 uh, looking like this. He's a 500 millibar height spoke down in two wheat pits. The first wheat pit takes from 2nd to the 8th of November. The coming week will have a chop low pressure across the West Europe. The ridge will be pulled out to our west. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be unsettled. Um, and uh, rather cold. We know we're starting off rather cold at the moment. We go through to week 4, or week 2, I should say what I'm talking about. Week 2, uh, looking a lot milder, 9th to the 15th of uh, November. High pressure across central Europe, low pressure out to the northwest. Still relatively dry, but bringing up a much milder uh, west southwesterly wind with that. Week 3 is going to be the 16th to 22nd of November. Again, high pressure is uh, dominating across western uh, Europe. So that's again bringing up a very mild air, potentially from west and from the southwest. And then we go through to week 4. It's a bit of a change. It's 23rd to the 9th of November. The high pressure pulls out to our west and reaches north, which will start to allow colder air to begin to trickle in from the north or from the northeast so potentially colder by the end of november again i'll just show you the opening salvo from the cfs v2 monthly it's for december so this is it and uh, look at that very interesting 700 millibar height anomaly for uh, december with a lot of northern blocking high pressure around green and ice extending back into the latitudes in december with deep low pressure across western parts of Europe, bringing in wind from a north to northeasterly direction. Now, despite that northern blocking, the CFSB2 is managing to uh, bring us a very, <laughs> very mild month, as always, across much of uh, West Europe. It's very cold across northern uh, Europe, northeastern Europe, and into western Russia, it must be said. But I'm really dubious about that um, mild and average temperature anomaly. I reckon a cold month would be very likely for western Europe with this level of northern blocking. You've just got to send that low pressure out off a little bit further south was to open the door to those very cold northeasterlies. But, uh, you know, that is a huge amount of northern blocking that we've got there over Greenland and Iceland. If that verified, I think the cold air will force its way into Western Europe. So the model doesn't see the cold air yet, but uh, I reckon that would be, you know, potentially really quite a cold uh, December if it came off. That's a big if, of course. The precipitation only for December shows drier than average in the North Atlantic up towards ice to Greenland, wetter than average just to our south and southwest. Again, it all looks rather indicative of a negative NEO, doesn't it? You've got low pressure around here. You've got high pressure through here. The Azores high is pushed and displaced further southwest of its typical position. So, uh, yeah, very interesting from the CFS for December. But it's only the opening salvo. It will change, I suspect, several times before we get to uh, December, as the CFS usually does. We'll keep you updated. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please give smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Make it so to everybody uh, for doing that. Tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Uh, and drop a comment there so you think. Thank you so much. You'll be able to see future weather content if you subscribe. Including future live streams, future winter updates, and uh, future Christmas updates. That brings me nicely on to tomorrow. Um, so, tomorrow we're going to be signing off for a 7am forecast, a USA forecast. Have a 10 to 14 day. We may try and slot in uh, the uh, November forecast from Gatsworth as well. But at 7 pm, there will be a premiere tomorrow. We don't do many, so there's going to be a little premiere tomorrow at 7 pm for the first Christmas update. I'll see you on the red carpet uh, at 7 pm and uh, we'll have a bit of fun with our first Christmas update. The Christmas countdown begins tomorrow at 7 pm and we'll run on then right the way to Christmas. How interesting is that, everybody? Don't forget to check out the winter update, the night of winter update, which was released in two parts on Sunday and Monday. It's a cracking watch, even if I say so myself. So check out uh, the uh, night of winter update, part one and two, uh, if you have not yet seen it. And uh, yeah, I shall see you tomorrow, either for our uploads or for our premiere at 7pm. But uh, for this video and for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.